Welcome to Three Steps to Sketch. In this video, we'll graph the basic unshifted cosecant equation, y equals cosecant 3x. So here's our template and our grid with our equation. And we notice that this equation is in the general form for an unshifted cosecant equation. That's y equals a cosecant bx. So we see no shifting going on, and that's how we know we can use this basic template. So let's dive into step one. We're going to find the companion equation and all of its essential information. So our companion equation is simply going to be the reciprocal equation. We'll graph it so that we can then graph the cosecant equation that we want. And to find the companion equation, all you have to do is replace cosecant with its reciprocal sign. So our companion equation here is y equals the sine of 3x. So we'll really just graph this graph. Um, if you already know how to graph sine graphs, that's great. All of this will be exactly the same as that method. Um, if not, maybe go check out that video, uh, get confident with that first, and then come back to cosecant because um, it really builds um, when we use it, when we use this method. So let's go ahead and analyze this equation, y equals sine three x. To get this graph, we need to know a, which is the coefficient in front of sine, so it's one. That'll be our amplitude, and that's the distance from our midline to a maximum or minimum. b is the coefficient of x, so three. We'll have three cycles that happen between zero and two pi, and we also can use b to find the period, and we calculate that two pi divided by b. So in this case, it'll be two pi divided by three for the period, and that's the length of a horizontal cycle. Now we can go ahead and choose some scale labels. So we're very intentional about our horizontal scale. That's how we label our horizontal tick marks um, so that our pattern is nice and evenly spaced and each important point in step two aligns with um, a horizontal tick mark. We will take our period and divide by four to get our horizontal scale. So two pi over three divided by four, or if you wanna think about that as multiplying by one fourth, that might be easier. Okay, you see that you end up with two pi over 12 or pi over six as your horizontal scale. And our vertical scale, one usually works very well, and it definitely does in this case. So let's take a minute to go ahead and label our axes. We'll start with the horizontal axis and let's label counting by pi over six. So that's one pi over six, 2 pi over 6 reduces to pi over 3, 3 pi over 6 reduces to pi over 2, 4 pi over 6 reduces to 2 pi over 3. With this method, you should notice that your fourth tick mark matches the period, um, and it does, so we should feel good to proceed. We have 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6 reduces to pi, 7 pi over 6, and 8 pi over 6, which reduces to 4 pi over 3. Now I'm going to pause and label the negative side of the axis with the same values, just negative. So if you're following along, uh, go ahead and pause and get your axis labeled. Okay, so here's what the full horizontal labeled axis looks like. And we can quickly label the vertical axis too, since we are just counting by ones. So one, two, three, and negative one, negative two, negative three. Now, before we move on to actually plotting this companion equation, I like to find the asymptotes for the cosecant equation because the zeros of sine are linked to the vertical asymptotes of cosecant. And there's a really nice, easy way to find the asymptotes equation for cosecant. All you have to do is take the inputs of the cosecant equation, so 3x in this case, I'll do a little scratch work here, and set them equal to the original zeros of sine x. So those happen at zero plus pi k. And k is just an integer here. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Let's go ahead and solve for x. So we're going to divide everything in this equation by three. And we'll write this equation now in our asymptotes equation spot. So we'll have x equals zero plus pi over three k. So, this is a really concise way to represent every single asymptote and which asymptote we are dealing with depends on what value you substitute in for k. So if you substitute in k is zero, you'll see we should have an asymptote on our final graph at x equals zero or the y-axis. 
You can let k equal 1, there should be 1 at pi over 3. If k is negative 1, there should also be 1 at negative pi over 3. So this is a really nice way to generate every single asymptote without actually having to list anything out. I really like doing this in the analysis phase um, up in step one so that as we get into graphing in the next two steps, uh, we have a way to kind of double check or to connect back to what we know should be happening. All right, so now that we've got a lot of analysis out of the way, let's move to step two where we will plot our companion pattern. So essentially we're graphing lightly y equals sine 3x. So recall that the sine base pattern is going to be x-intercept starting at the origin, maximum, x-intercept, minimum. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll start at the origin and all of these points should align nicely with our horizontal tick marks. So at our first horizontal tick mark we have a maximum and the y-coordinate comes from our value of a. It's linked to our amplitude. At the second horizontal tick mark we have another x-intercept. At the third we have a minimum so its y-coordinate is the opposite value of a. And then we would close out our pattern to start anew. So you can see here you've basically graphed y equals sine 3x. And now that we have this we're ready for the main step. Step three we will recip, sketch, and repeat. So recip is just kind of the verb form of um, take the reciprocal values and graph your cosecant graph. So let's go through and we'll just choose a few points to actually discuss what the reciprocal value is that we're taking. But once you've graphed a few cosecant graphs, you will know what this graph looks like and you probably won't have to actively go through point by point. All right, so starting at the origin, if you try to take the reciprocal of zero, you end up with one over zero or an undefined value. And that is a key that we have a vertical asymptote here. Um, think back to our asymptotes equation. We said we should have a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. So we should already feel like we're starting off on a good foot for this graph. All right, let's take some reciprocal values as we move to the right. Uh, let's say we took the reciprocal of one half, that's two. The reciprocal of one is one. Another one half goes to two. Okay. Then we get two pi over three another zero or x-intercept. So when you try to take the reciprocal of that, you end up with undefined and another asymptote. So this is the one when k is one for our asymptotes equation. A few more reciprocals. If you take the reciprocal, I'm just choosing nice easy values of negative one half, you get negative two, negative one, you get negative one, another negative one half, you get two again. All right, and then if you continued to two pi over three, you would get another undefined value, another vertical asymptote. So let's go ahead and sketch in this first cycle of our graph. So here we have a cosecant curve. Notice that this point here at pi over six one is what we call a local or relative minimum. Um, and so that just means within the area that it's in, it's the lowest y value, okay? Not the absolute, but relatively. Okay, and that's always gonna happen when you have the original maximum of sine from that companion equation. All right, at pi over two, you see we have that pi over two negative one point. That's what we call local or relative maximum. So the highest y value in the general area. Not the absolute highest, but it's a nice uh, bit of terminology to know. All right, so let's repeat this pattern over and over again. Um, we'll get a couple more cycles of our final graph. So we'll have a vertical asymptote here at two pi over three. That's when K is two in that asymptotes equation if you're keeping track. So I'm just gonna plot the local minimum here and that curve that goes along with it. Another vertical asymptote at pi, that's when K is three. Plot another relative max and a little bit of a shaky curve there, but nonetheless, We've got that, and then you would have another vertical asymptote when k is four, so x equals four pi over three. Let's move in the other direction. So we're just working this pattern in reverse. So we have a local maximum here, another asymptote. This is when k is negative one, a local minimum curve here, another asymptote when k is negative two, and let's repeat for one more cycle since we have the space. So we have another local max, another asymptote when k is negative three, 
another local min, and another asymptote when k is negative 4. So now we have a really nice sketch of y equals cosecant 3x using this three steps to sketch method. Hopefully this worked example helped you understand the method a little bit more um, so that you're confident using it in any unshifted cosecant equation. Um, I'll post links with more worked examples and other trig graphs in the video description. So check those out and thanks for watching. Good luck with your graphing.